Hello, my friends, and happy Saturday. I hope you guys are all having an amazing weekend so far. If you're new here, my name is Alexandra, and this is Beauty is a Vibe. And you all, I am so pumped for today's video because we have two products that we are going to be reviewing, both of which have some pretty big shoes to fill. So we got the Natasha Denona My Dream Palette. Some people are saying it looks like glam. Others are saying it looks like retro. We're going to decide today, folks. So we got that. And then we got the Tower 28 Make Waves Mascara. Now, most of the time, I wouldn't really make a big deal out of this, but Tower 28 has been hyping this up, claiming that they worked on this for two years, you guys. And supposedly their wand is like super innovative. And the formula, the formula, let's talk about that. Supposedly, it does not hurt or affect people who have sensitive eyes, which I suffer from sensitive eyes. Most mascaras, I cannot wear more than two or three hours. That is one of the reasons why I have fallen head over heels with the Kiss Falscara lashes, why I used to go get my lashes done, because I don't like wearing mascaras for long periods of time, and those don't bother my eyes. So I'm very interested to see if this ends up being you know, a hit or an absolute miss. I have high hopes for it. I mean, they really hyped it up. So uh, let's get into it. By the way, before you guys ask, this is what my shirt says. Cute. I know. I know. I know. I'm already getting there. You guys know, man, September 1st, it's game on for me. All right. So we got the Natasha Denona My Dream Palette. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. When I first saw the supposed leaked we're gonna talk about those <laughs> here in just a minute but uh yeah this was a leaked photos of this I immediately was just like didn't we just do that like am I having deja vu right now did I like step into a time warp I mean it happens you know you ever watch Twilight Zone damn aliens you know what I'm saying <laughs> all right but yeah I I immediately thought it looked like retro. I just like many, many of you guys, I did. I saw retro. I was like, it just looked like a rearranged retro to me. You know what I mean? Now, a lot of other people out there were like, no, no, no. It looks like glam. It looks like glam. That looks like glam all the way. So I'll go ahead and settle this dispute for everybody right now because my friends, I will tell you, that we were all wrong, it looks like neither. <laughs> it really doesn't. It okay, doesn't. let's see if we can do this without me dropping and breaking my palettes. So here they are, one on top of the other. You got Regero on top, the Dream Palette in the center, and Glam down here on the bottom. And as you can see, stacked right on top of one another. I mean, you know, you got a few that look like maybe okay, but then even when you swatch them, they don't, they're not even like close. You know, like that's like a soft powdery pink that has way more peach and orange in it. Like it's just, yeah, they're, they're so very different. It literally is like, as I said, this one and this one created a magical love child and it's called the dream palette. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the, like the best explanation I could give for you guys. And I tell you, I have never been more excited for a Natasha Denona palette because I really love the retro. I like the glam, but the retro I loved. And this color story, ah, just the grunginess of it, I just, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling, this is very fall. This is, that's what it is to me. It's just so very fall. I'm just really hoping this is her good normal formula. So yeah, guys, let's get into it. For today's look, I am actually going to be using the ABH primer right here, which you guys know I use quite often and love, but also I have been using the Jaclyn Hill primer a lot here recently. However, I did test this palette last night with both of these primers, and I can happily report to you that you definitely need a more opaque a uh, little bit thicker, stickier primer, preferably for Natasha Denona's formula, mainly because it just blends so much better. It blends so much better. It looks so much better. Like, uh, I'll just show you guys. So you can see what I'm talking about. I'm not just making this up. You know what I'm saying? All right. So the first shade I'm going to go into is Carpe Diem, and this is on a 501 
from BK Beauty, the Angie Hot and Flashy. You guys know I love these brushes so much. These literally are some of the best brushes, in my opinion, like eye brushes, just in general, uh, that I have ever used. I mean, Refer has some really good ones for sure. Love them. I definitely love Sigma. You guys know I have some Sigma ones sitting here. They will always be sitting here, you know. Speaking of Sigma, you guys, who else is excited for the Sigma and Alice in Wonderland collection? Like, I know you guys are not all, obviously, Disney freaks like myself, but Alice, my friends, she has a special place in my heart. I actually have an Alice tattoo on the back of my neck of my own design, might I add. I'll uh, pop a picture up here for you. It's literally right here and it says we're all mad here. I love it. It's like one of my favorite tattoos and um, it's just because for me, Alice is like basically kind of like my reformed self, so to speak. So yeah, if you think about Alice, and I'm talking about Alice, the one in the Disney movie, not the one in the video game, because they are completely different storylines. <laughs> By the way, I love the American McGee's Alice. Oh, just such a favorite, such a favorite. Love the video game, love Alice Madness Returns. It is still, to this day, probably one of Cadence and Mide's favorite video games ever to play. But nevertheless, uh, talking about the Disney Alice, the one that we all know, right? So that storyline, if you think about it and you think about like what Alice does, how she chases this white rabbit down this hole and, you know, gets kind of sucked into this wonderland, but she does it to herself. You know what I mean? Like the whole way she does it to herself, but she kind of plays the victim a little bit. You know what I mean? So I just, I, I love Alice. I've always loved Alice and the Cheshire cat, you guys, that is my spirit animal all day long, wholeheartedly. Tell you guys what, the one thing that I really do love and appreciate about Natasha Denona and her eyeshadow formula is the fact that it looks so good on mature skin. Like it doesn't matter if you have younger eyes or mature eyes or really mature eyes. It just, it really just looks very flattering. It does not matter. And I love that. I'm going to pull out a good old ColourPop brush here and just kind of deepen this outside. Now I will tell you guys what these shades Natasha loves to use them, she does, but they can look very punched in the eye very quickly. We're gonna um, ground everything out here in just a second so that it does not look that way on our eyes, but I'm just letting you know, you're gonna have to like ground these deep dark raspberries and like this one is a really uh, more like a kind of a blueberry, like a smushed blueberry kind of color here. And, you know, as you can see, as you're applying them one right on top of the other, you're not going to get a whole lot of difference. I mean, I feel like she could have probably done one of these and not the other, or maybe even done like one in the cream to powder, because both of these are cream to powder formulas too. So I feel like she could have done one in the cream to powder and maybe one in like just a creamy matte and... That would have been fine because then, you know, it makes it a little different. But yeah, this color does, like I said, it adds a little bit more of a, you know, blue, violet kind of undertone where the other one was definitely more like red raspberry undertone. But they're both pretty similar. She does love these tones though, I will say that. I'm going to take a little aspiration now. And this is the one thing that I really love doing is taking her matte shadows and layering them on top of her cream to powder shadows. Just the look that it gives. It's like almost shiny, but not. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just, I love it. The look, the blend, you know, um, the finished product, as you will, just looks amazing each and every time. Okay, so after you have pretty much blended your life away 
we are going to move on to vision, which I'm hoping this works and does what I want it to do. Anyways, so let's talk about the supposed leaked photos of Natasha's My Dream collection. Because this is not the first collection that was supposedly leaked. As a matter of fact, it happens pretty much every launch, it seems. Every like big palette launch, even with some of like the smaller palettes. Have you guys noticed that? Like, like at first I was like, man, that sucks for her. But after a while, it just kind of seems like, is it really being leaked? You know what I mean? So I kind of like started paying attention to who was doing the quote unquote leaking. And it seems to me, just based off of what I'm seeing, this is a complete conspiracy here, y'all. But it seems to me that there's a little bit of, uh, like, mean girls kind of going on. You know, like, some people are posting these quote-unquote leaked photos and not getting in any trouble. And uh, the brand's not striking their Instagram account. And others are taking that same post and reposting it. And they're getting striked and getting in trouble for posting leaked photos. So I, I kind of, you know, I kind of find that interesting and I kind of have mixed feelings. I don't know 100% that that's what's going on, but I do know 100% that that is what has happened multiple times now. Um, I've witnessed it. I've got screenshots of it. So uh, I don't know if like the whole leaked, you know, this is necessarily it actually being leaked or you know, like if it's like a marketing kind of strategy or something, because it just seems to be happening a lot. And it seems to be that only a few people are really, uh, that the brand is really going after for quote unquote leaking it. And it's just not ever the person who first initially leaked it. Does that make sense to you guys? Does that make sense? So, uh, you know, I don't want to say that, uh, Natasha's doing anything shady because I like Natasha quite a bit and I, think her products are amazing. I think she is a true artist and I think the products that she puts out are there's like a, tr a lot of true thought behind them. You know what I mean? Like I think um you know, you can tell she is a MUA that works in the field and and she knows what's going to work on her clients uh skin and skin type and tones and the color tones that she chooses for these palettes and collections, I just think are absolutely amazing. Now, I do know with this collection, there was also like um, a face palette and then a lipstick and a lip liner, and I wanted to get those, but when this launch happened also, there was the ColourPop launch with the um, Hogwarts collection, and then also the Sigma launch with Alice collection, and I died, I had to get that. So, <laughs> Since there was so much going on, I just got the palette. And also, when I was looking at the little face uh, palette thing online, it looked just like the colors that, or very similar to, anyways, the colors that she launched in her face palette from the holiday thing. So, I'm just going to use these today on my cheeks and stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and take these off, do a little cleanup, put the rest of my makeup on, and then we will be back to try on... So here is our finished and completed look and I'm absolutely loving it. It is very fall. It's just giving me all the feels and this morning it was really, really cool outside and I'm just I'm loving it. I'm loving it, you guys. All right. So let's talk about some final thoughts and real quick, I did want to let you guys know I did apply a half lash just because I felt like this look called for it. It was just a little more dark and sultry and yeah. So we put on uh, the Lily Lash half lash and dreamy so that is what I do have on my eyes of course I have everything linked down below that I am wearing but let's talk about some final thoughts so um I really like one of these products and I don't like the other one so much so let's talk about the one that I don't like uh the tower 28 make waves mascara so before I give you my opinions on this mascara I do want to say one thing which is the fact that I feel like mascaras are one of those beauty products that 
everybody kind of has their own preferences to, you know what I mean? Like what I like might not be what you like kind of thing. And I think when it comes to listening to other people's opinions about mascaras, it is very important that you find someone who likes similar mascaras to you already, and then maybe listen to their opinion. So with that being said, if you guys are curious, mascaras that I like normally, uh, Rare Beauty Mascara, the Bare Minerals Strength and Length. I don't ever hear anybody talking about this, but it is amazing. Uh, I really do like the Bad Gal Bang, but only like the first two or three months that it's open. You know what I mean? Uh, and then same with the Falsies Lashless by Maybelline. Really like this. Again, just those first like two or three months. And then I really like the UD um, Lash. So those are all just some recent lashes. I like the Pat McGrath too, but super expensive. And again, it only lasts a couple months. So with all of that being said, as I said, I do have very sensitive eyes. I do normally have to you know, uh, take most mascaras off within the first few hours of wearing them because they just, they bother my eyes. They make my eyes itch and burn. And it's just, it, it, it starts small and then gets worse and worse as the day goes on. So, uh, this claims to not do that, but it did do that to me. So I tried this mascara three, four different times now, including today. I'm trying it again today. I will leave a note in the comments, but I have a feeling here in a couple hours, around about the time that it comes for me to make uh, Liam's lunch, I'm going to be ripping my eyeballs off um, with, you know, cotton pads and stuff, trying to get this crap off my face. Because, uh, yeah, this actually kicked in a lot quicker than some of my other ones that I really like. And normally, I just deal with it, but uh, it's because, you know, it makes my lashes look great, but I didn't really like the way this made my lashes look either. So, uh, me personally, I'm not a spidery lash kind of gal. I like my lashes separated and full and fluffy. You know what I mean? And I feel like this definitely gives you the kind of like spidery lash look. So if you like that um, and you don't have super sensitive eyes, you might love this mascara. I've heard a lot of people saying great things about it. It's just not for this sensitive eye kind of gal. You know what I'm saying? All right. The Natasha Denona My Dream Palette. Listen, <laughs> you guys, this is amazing. I mean, look, I, I feel like we know Natasha's formula at this point. It is good. You know, I feel like this palette... A lot of us thought it was just a lot of repeat shades. It is clearly not. I have been loving the looks that I have been coming up with it. I've had this palette and mascara for a few days now, and I have really been enjoying this palette. Mascara, not so much. It's been a pain in my eyes, but the palette has been just, I love it. I love it. And every time I sit down to do my makeup, I grab it. And I have not, I will tell you guys, I have not played in these three shades right here on this corner, but everything else I, oh, and the black, these three shades and the black, but everything else I have my, had my fingers and, and freaking brushes dipped in as deep as you can get them. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, if you like Natasha Denona, I do feel like she raised like these midi palettes because I think they were 65. And they are 69 now. Let me know down below because I'm curious. Because I, I went back and looked and it seems like she raised the prices on some of the other ones. But then some of them not. Like the pastel palette is still just $65. But the other ones are 69 so I don't, I don't know. That was just kind of weird to me. I'm just, I'm just curious. Did she write, is it, am I losing my mind here? You guys let me know. But either way, I think this is a great palette. Uh, obviously it's a little bit of an investment. And if, you know, you're not into those colors or if you don't like fall colors or if you already have similar fall vibe palettes in your collection you don't need it you guys I mean there's no reason that you know have over excessive spending here but if you love Natasha as much as I do and you can't help yourself uh you will not be disappointed because this is a very good palette I'm just saying all right anyways that's all I have for you guys today I will see you tomorrow and we're gonna break down the Jeffree Star wedding collection because that video took me a little longer than expected because number one, I had to redo it a couple times, but secondly, because there were some things that transpired after I filmed it the first two times. All right. Anyways, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.